I believe that in the medium and long term, the ruble will fall. The Russian currency doesn't look strong, the economy is not developing, with the rates that the government and business wants. has taken a step to jeopardize US-Russia relations. And the important thing is that that step wasn't triggered by anything. This is a move to impose illegal restrictions, to attempt to influence other countries, including US allies, which are interested in developing ties with Russia. We've been waiting for quite a long time, so that maybe something would change for the better. We had hoped that the situation would change. But it looks like, even if it does change, then it won't be in the near future. I decided that it is time for us to show that we will not leave anything unanswered. What other counter sanctions could Russia call on? It could close Russian airspace to Western Airlines. That could bankrupt some of the smaller carriers, but Russia would lose out on overfly fees of $300 million a year. It could cut off gas supplies to Europe. The EU gets a third of its gas from Russia, but shutting it down would be costly. Gazprom sold gas worth $70 billion to Europe last year. They could ban car imports from the West. Russia is Europe's biggest car market after Germany, but car manufacturers could supply cars made in other countries unaffected by sanctions. 2014 sanctions against Russia caused Russia to take retaliatory measures and include a ban on most fish, meat, vegetable, fruit and dairy products from Europe, creating a vacuum. No more beloved brie cheese or filet mignon were on the Russian menu. So local farmers and the producers of the so-called slow food had to create those types of foods here in Russia. The background of that is uh, counter sanctions that we introduced uh, uh, against sanctions uh, put forward by uh, our uh, US and uh, EU and other uh, uh, partners. Uh, those sanctions provided uh, additional uh, incentive uh, uh, in the form of barrier for our producers. But the important thing is to, uh, is to ensure the quality of our own products is sufficient uh, to substitute foreign production. Not just uh, uh, barriers, but quality. And this is what we are working on right now. Overwhelmed by a surplus in production, some farmers in Europe have been forced to destroy their own produce. For many, Russia was their primary export market, and after the ban, they ended up with more than they could sell. A string of protests has swept across the continent over the last year. losses amount to billions of euros and there are some bleak forecasts on the toll that prolonged sanctions could take on European economies in the coming year. Now this one for example shows that in the worst case scenario Germany alone could lose almost 30 billion euro. EU farmers have repeatedly called on governments to deal with the problem. EU farmers have repeatedly called on governments to deal with the problem. Due to Russian sanctions, Italy has probably lost around 1.2 billion euro this year. 
and that's just talking about Italian farmers. Let's not forget that apart from direct producers, there are many other industries affected. All our labor unions have officially and unanimously demanded from the government that this problem is solved. Certainly we want changes. You say there that the pressure is mounting. Are those uh, dissenting voices, are they being listened to at the moment, those farmers protesting, for example? Well, they are being listened to, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, at least in Germany, the political elite is not ready to react. We've just he recently had our annual meeting of our Farmers Association, and uh, it was very, very outspoken that in particular the milk business and the pork and piglet business is under a uh, strong strain that people are really losing out here, that the structure in Germany is uh, endangered. But uh, Berlin is not ready to listen as yet. Our own Euro European politicians, which uh, intervene in Russian pol politics where they shouldn't do that, to our, to our personal opinion at least.